Are cruciferous vegetables actually bad for your thyroid or is that just some bad hype? My name is Dr. Brooke Goldner and I want to educate you on the truth about your thyroid and cruciferous vegetables so you can have great thyroid health and great overall health. So what is the deal? Well, it's really about nutrient absorption. It turns out there's some nutrients that battle for absorption when you consume them in a certain meal, like calcium and iron, for example. If you consume them both together, you'll probably absorb more calcium in one sitting than the iron. No big deal for most of us. It balances out in the end. But if you're trying to get more iron in your diet, maybe you'll have an iron rich meal without a calcium rich food with it next time that can help. Well, when it comes to your thyroid, the most important nutrient that you need is iodine because that's what your body uses to produce thyroid hormone. So if your iodine levels are low, you're going to have a higher TSH, which is how your body asks for more thyroid hormone. And if TSH continues to go up, it can stimulate the thyroid to grow bigger, and that is a goiter. So what does that have to do with cruciferous vegetables? Well, cruciferous vegetables contain a nutrient called glucosinolates, and that's converted into thiocyanates. And these compounds can interfere with iodine of absorption. So if you consume cruciferous vegetables with something that contains your iodine for the day, then the cruciferous vegetables can interfere with that iodine absorption. So again, if iodine levels are low, you're going to have lower amounts of thyroid hormone and thyroid hormone is important for your body. That is literally your body's battery pack. And iodine is also important for brain function as well. This is the reason why iodine was actually put into table salt many, many years ago is to protect people from iodine deficiency. Now, the most common cause of low thyroid hormone production is actually Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune disease, and that also will cause your TSH to go up and thyroid hormone production to go down. But it can also happen from iodine deficiency. Interestingly, when people have high TSH, uh, the doctors normally don't even test for iodine. They just prescribe thyroid hormone. I have had patients of my own where I've seen their TSH go up. We check for iodine, and when I prescribe iodine, their TSH goes back to normal. I've also had wellness clients who began iodine uh, supplementation and were able to come off of their thyroid hormone because they did not have Hashimoto's. They had low iodine intake. So why not just avoid cruciferous vegetables, right? If, they, if you want to avoid those pesky glucosinolates and thiocyanates so that you can get all of your iodine absorption, why not just avoid the cruciferous vegetables altogether? Well, that's lazy advice at best and dangerous for human health. Glucosinolates and, and thiocyanates, these are phytochemicals and they're mostly found in cruciferous vegetables and they've been proven to be outstanding antioxidants that contribute to both cardio and neuroprotection. These antioxidants have been shown to reverse the apoptosis and damage caused from oxidation of other things that people are consuming and exposed to that are causing dementia and heart disease. Think about how common dementia and heart disease is in our country and other Western countries and how it's affected you personally. Now they've also found, uh, John Hopkins has shown that cruciferous vegetables when those pesky glucosinolates have actually created benefits to our body beyond the neuroprotective and cardioprotective benefits. They've also been shown to kill cancer cells in vitro. One of them is called sulforaphane. I've talked about that a lot before. It kills cancer cells, has prevented COVID and flu viruses from being able to replicate, and has brought down lung inflammation during COVID infections. So these are really, really important phytonutrients that are necessary for cellular repair and cellular function. They can protect you, again, against heart disease, brain disease, disease, as well as cancer and other infections. Why in the world would you choose to malnourish yourself to protect iodine absorption when you can hypernourish yourself and just make sure you get sufficient iodine intake? So I've worked with thousands of people around the world reversing autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's. And I found that cruciferous vegetables are key to the rapid reversal of disease, rapid repair of cells and damage to organs. And I also make sure that people take their daily iodine when they are hyper nourishing so that they can get all the benefits. And what I found is people have been able to reverse Hashimoto's, had their antibodies come down and their need for thyroid hormone come down, eating a pound of cruciferous vegetables a day, as long as they get in their daily allowance of iodine. So again, Western medicine and nutrition blogs are suggesting you should malnourish yourself, increase your risk of dementia, increase your risk of cardiovascular disease, and increase your risk of cancer and infections just to make sure you don't have to look at your iodine intake. 
but the alternative would be make sure that you eat those cruciferous vegetables, enjoy all the health benefits, and make sure you get your daily allowance of iodine. The daily allowance of iodine is 150 micrograms a day for folks who do not have thyroid disease. And if you do have hypothyroid, I usually recommend 300 micrograms a day. Don't take more, too much iodine is not good for you either. It could actually be toxic for the thyroid. But I found in my clients, when I'm watching them 300 micrograms a day with their cruciferous intake a day, they are able to get all the benefits, including a healthier thyroid. Just make sure that when you take your iodine, you don't take it at the same time as the cruciferous vegetables. Take it about an hour or two before, and you should be able to safely absorb your iodine, absorb all of those healthy phytonutrients, and have the best possible health. I hope that helps you understand better, avoid the nutrition misinformation, the bad hype, and hypernourish for your health. This is Dr. Brooke Goldner. I'll see you next time.